motion to approve. So moved. A second? A second. And when your name is called, please indicate aye, nay, or abstain. Dick Bradshaw? Aye. Cameron Hughes? Aye. And I am an aye. Motion carries. Reading of the minutes from February 8th, 2021. Are there any additions or corrections to those minutes? I have none. I have none. I move to accept the minutes. Second. And how do you vote, Dick Bradshaw? Aye. Cameron Yates? Aye. And I am an aye. So we now proceed to the claims for uh, February 16th, totaling $181,398.89. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. I second. Are there any questions on the claims? I have none. I have none. On the on the question, Dick Bradshaw. Aye. Cameron Yates. Aye. And I am an aye. Carries. Leanne, did you have something that you wanted to yes. add here? Yes, I have a claim that I did not get on the docket. Um, if you give me the authority to pay this claim, it will appear on the next docket. If you're uncomfortable with issuing the check beforehand, then I will wait and just put it on the next docket and we'll pay it then. But this is a check to Milestone for their retainage that we held on the project on the Samuel Milroy. Aaron brought the claim to me. And he is satisfied with the work and has signed off on the project and everything is completed. And we always hold the retainage back until that point. So if it is okay with you, I will issue the check. If you prefer that I wait, I can do so and put it on the duck docket. We've done this before, but it's entirely up to what you feel the most comfortable with. Um, I move we issue the check. If I, if I could just add that this is a, a partial payment of the retainage. I think we are uh, holding back fifteen thousand dollars to yes, cover the, the expenses that are still going to be outstanding in the spring, in the spring, and striping and things of that sort. Correct, Leanne? Yes. Yes, and this is a sum that both milestone. Um, and our engineers and, and Aaron had come to an agreement on, on this set figure because there's no way they can complete the step that would have to be done in spring. If you ask them to do the seeding and stuff now, you're wasting their money and time and ours. So it would have to be redone. So this was an agreed figure between Milestone, the engineers, and Aaron. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. A second. And on the motion to approve the uh, to approve issuing a check to Milestone, uh, if you're of those in favor, uh, when you're called, uh, just signify your vote, whether it's an aye, nay, or abstain. Uh, Dick Bradshaw. Aye. Chairman Yates. Aye. And I am an aye. So you may proceed with that, Leanne. Okay, thank you. Now this will, the, excuse ahead, me, this, this will appear on your next docket, but when you see it on there, please remember that we have already paid it. Thank you. Thank you, Leanne. Uh -huh. And then under new business, uh, as you know, earlier this year, the city of Delphi received uh, a $596,233 CDBG grant from Okra uh, for continuing the work on the city's drinking water improvements. Uh, this project was to replace 
a two inch galvanized pipe with six inch ductile uh, along Brewer Wells and Charles Street, adding hydrants and abandoning the two inch line and tying over the existing services. It also uh, would tie over uh, services to eight inch lines and abandon existing two inch galvanized lines uh, along a section of Vine Street and the same along a section of Market Street and uh, Howard Street. Um, Market Street from Howard to Columbia Street and also a section along Front Street. Um, we had uh, our opening of bids on, at nine o'clock on uh, Friday the 12th and uh, all of the bids were in excess of the grant amount. Uh, a revised estimate was completed by Butler, Fairburn, and Seifert that placed the project amount at uh, 1.3 million. Uh, the bid summary document uh, was prepared by Butler, Fairman, and Seifert and included in your packet. Uh, DNW Construction was the low bidder on this project at 769,000. The company has previously performed satisfactory work for the city of Delphi and Butler, Fairman, and Seifert. Um, letter of recommendation for award for the project to DNW Construction was sent separately. And so I think you received that as well. Um, so Matt, I believe you're on the line. Did you wish to add anything before we um, take a vote on this? Um, no, other than uh, not, not to correct you, Mayor, but it's RW contracting. Did I say DW? Yeah. yeah. Sorry no about that. Can um, I don't know yeah. if Matt, Matt is on the line. I apologize, Matt. <laughs> Yeah, no problem. I, I just want to emphasize that um, what what this project accomplishes is um, really it's been an operation and maintenance headache for the city for a long time. Uh, a couple of these areas, um, and part of why I believe you got the grant is you know Craig had sixty water main breaks on Brewer Street, so. This is, uh, in, in our opinion, a, a very good project. Um, we, we are recommending that you go ahead and award to RW, RW Contracting, if you so choose. Craig updated uh, the numbers today on, uh, I think since 2018, we've had 125 leaks on Brewer, Wells, Market, and Boeing Street. Um, and if you figure that these are at minimum $2,000 a pop for, uh, for the repairs that are required, we've spent our, you know, the, the overage on this many times, <laughs> um, certainly uh, more than once. Uh, so the difference between the construction amount uh, in the grant and the base contract bid is approximately 233000 uh, which we can pay out of the uh, water construction fund, which currently has a, a balance in excess of 400,000. And as, uh, as Matt has already indicated, um, we're going to continue, if we were to not do this project, uh, we're going to continue to face high levels of maintenance and repair on, on the systems in, in, this, um, in these uh, streets. And uh, um, you know, just create more headaches for ourselves down the road. Uh, another option considered was to um, go back to uh, to try to amend the um, the grant award and re reduce the scope of the project and rebid it. And Emily, do you wish to speak to that? Yeah, so Matt and I were kind of discussing, you know, what our options were. And obviously, since this was a $200,000 difference, um, that if we were to choose to 200000 off of this grant award, um, that's a 35% change. Um, and modifications to that extent are not seen favorably um, by the state. 
And in this instance, we probably would have had to have resubmitted the project to be rescored, essentially. And it just, you had a risk of them basically coming back and saying, you know, this modification is too great. And um, because you've taken out so much of the project, it's not going to score high enough. So there was that risk. Uh, that the grant money could have possibly had to have gone back if we could not um, have found this additional local money to make this project happen. So if we could uh, have a motion uh, to, uh, to approve um, the selection of R&W construction for this project, and then we can proceed to discussion. So moved. And is there a second? A second. Uh, any discussion? I have a lot. What is the uh, what's the predicted uh, start date for the project? Matt? Uh, sure. Um, that was Spidell. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's probably it's weather dependent. Um, we we want to get started as soon as possible um, with with the construction market right now. There are long lead times on material, so uh, as, as fast as we can get shop drawings and material procured and good weather, uh, it would hope to be uh, early spring. Okay. Do you guys have a set up already in place for how you're going to route traffic when you're on Washington or if you're going to be on the main road there? How you're going to reroute traffic? Sure. Yeah, we will definitely uh, coordinate with the, with the city and, and we're actually in the county in a little bit of this area um, on all of that. Uh, hopefully schools back in and deal with buses and um, fire and, and emergency personnel as well. Okay. Thank you, Matt. I had some questions. It really doesn't involve the, uh, the necessity of doing this, but on the bidding process, who, who did the engineering estimate, Matt? Uh, that was Butler, Fairman, and Cipher. Um, so this grant application was submitted under Mayor Evans uh, quite some time ago. Um, I think even before you know COVID, there's been a lot of things that have happened. Um, we wanted to make sure, or at the time, wanted to make sure that the full grant amount was, I think, Emily, you can correct me, but it's somewhere around 700000 where it maxes out. And we wanted to make sure that the project was big enough to get that. Uh, since that time, we've seen significant increases in uh, construction costs, material costs, and the, and the like. Um, so, And that's why you'll see the disparity in what our engineer's estimate was at the time that the bids were open. So Matt, are you saying that at the time that the grant was submitted, um, the engineering estimate was uh, in excess of 700000 uh, at, at the time of the grant amount, it was, uh, it was around, I think, 560 is what the construction estimate was. Okay. Yeah, there really wasn't a whole lot of difference from the grant amount to our, from what was submitted to you. Um, like the working budget. I mean, they're on the construction side. There wasn't. Then did Buffalo Fairman finally go back and reevaluate the bid and make a new estimate? Is that what happened? That. Matt Spidell. You're muted, Matt. I'm sorry. Yes, that is correct. We reevaluated the estimate. Um, the day before bid opening. In anticipation that the um, pricing, the cost of materials, 
materials, et cetera, would have changed substantially from the uh, submission of the grant? That is correct. Okay. Matt, will you speak to the differences in these bids, particularly the engineering estimate versus the low bid, the high bid? And for example, one thing that caught my eye was the estimate, the engineering estimate was 237000 for rock evacuation. The low bid was 31000 The next was 102 and 181 and the high bid was 395 Can there be that much difference between the 237 the engineering estimate, and the low bid? Yeah. Um I, I understand your concern. Uh, we've been in conversation with RW, uh, the, both the owner and the estimator, and they uh, they are comfortable with their bid. Um, I asked that, at, that I had that conversation this afternoon, actually. So we do feel comfortable. Uh, they have worked in the area. They're aware of the rock situation. And uh, I believe it's dealt with it before. So. Well, the difference between the low bid and the engineering bid is 58%. The low is 46% of the high bid. Um, is this normal, or is, there, is one of these bidders probably not want the job and just do a bunch of high numbers in there? I can't really speak to that. I know that... <laughs> I never want to be, Father <laughs> Fairman and Pfeiffer never wants to be a little better, so we're usually conservative. Um, so I, we're, we're not concerned and we feel comfortable with making this recommendation, I guess, is where we're at. I've been in a lot of bid situations and usually when you have a low bid that's that low, you probably need to uh, look at it more carefully. But you're saying that you have full confidence that this company can do this and you're not concerned about the difference in these bids. Correct. And, and Dick, for your information, um, R and W Construction uh, did the work, um, including excavation, et cetera, for, for Well 6 here in Delphi. So, Greg Myers uh, has worked with them and is comfortable that they can do the project. So that means a lot. So uh, I, I have no more questions. And thank you, Matt. Yes, sir. Thank you. So we'll proceed to the vote then. Please indicate your vote on your capital. Dick Bradshaw. Aye. Chairman Yates? Aye. And I am an aye. So, uh, Matt or Emily, next steps for this, please? So, for the grant portion, um, we do have to, we will start getting things gathered for the release of funds portion. Um, we will be working with Matt in order to get all of that documentation um, down to the state for their review. It does take about two to three weeks for that, and before that time, um, we won't, you know, nobody can be on job site or anything like that, um, because right. during that portion is when, um, you know, we're working with the contractor that's, um, you know, we're getting all the necessary parts and pieces, regulatory pieces in place. So um, we will work on that. And Matt, I think we will be, I'm assuming this isn't my project. Um, I'm filling in for Sean right now. Um, so Matt, have we, we haven't done, um, we'll still have need to do a pre-construction conference and everything, correct? That is correct. Okay. Which hasn't been scheduled, but. Um, okay. Awesome. So that's, we'll also be working on that, too. So um, will Butler, Chairman, and Cypher be issuing the notice of award? Yes. Yes, we can do that. Um, Emily, um, if you can confirm with our recommendation 
been you know, uh, proceeding this evening. Uh, are things in order for us to do that? Yes. I have one more question. I'm sorry. So for the pre-construction meeting with the canal center uh, being right there, a lot of traffic that's going to be in that general area. I'm assuming that we will have them in the pre-construction meeting to figure out ways, if necessary, to get traffic uh, to continue to go into the canal center. Is that correct? Yeah, ab absolutely. Um, now, Center, and then any any anyone else that you guys are concerned with, we can invite to that meeting as well. Okay, thank you. Matt. Some other businesses in that area as well, and so we'll certainly want to make sure that we invite uh, invite them to the uh, reconstruction meeting. Thank you. And we can help with a list of, of those uh, companies, uh, Matt, when you're at that point. Yep, sounds good. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll work with Craig and, and you here, or however you want me to handle that. But. Okay, very good. Yeah, Craig would be the, be the, the person, and uh, we can, you know, coordinate at our end. Uh, I think Matt Miller is uh, here at the Zoom meeting, and uh, just want to say congratulations, Matt, and we look forward to working with you. Thank you very much. We're excited to be a part of the project and looking forward to it as well. Thank you. If there are no other comments then on this uh, project, we'll go ahead and proceed. I did have one, one thing under miscellaneous uh, business, uh, which is, I guess, my comment, and that is uh, I wanted to let you know that the city is undertaking tree felling uh, for the Monon High Bridge Trail project in advance of release of funds from DNR, but with the assurance of reimbursement out of the grant from the head of the DNR, um, from Bob Bronson. Uh, the cutting of the trees um, is, is part of the, con in, in the construction zone, must be completed prior to April 1st uh, because of restrictions that go into place on that date to protect the Indiana bat. So any trees that are in the construction area that are larger than three inches, I see Dick shaking his head, um, uh, need to be removed prior to April 1st. Um, and uh, so we uh, reached out to um, several, uh, <coughs> well, because we have estimates from three uh, companies uh, on getting that work done and the lowest uh, was from Aaron Rogers, who already does city work for us, and um, uh, his uh, estimate is under 5000 so it doesn't need to come before Board of Works, but I did want you to be aware of the project and certainly aware that, you know, there will be, um, I think we all need to be aware that there may be questions from the public as we proceed. We have... Um, the deeds for these properties were to transfer to the city prior to construction. That has not taken place, but we do have letters from uh, all of the, the um, parties involved, Indiana Landmarks, uh, the Wabash and Erie Canal, and Heartland Heritage Inc. Uh, with the uh, right of access and permission to proceed with felling of the trees. Where are those trees in need of? There are some in the Miller Park area. Um, that is behind where, um, well, behind the uh, Mary Van Sickles, uh, Mary Van Sickles property okay. uh, in that area uh, was owned by, by Miller. Um, there is uh, some of the, there are some trees that are right along the, uh, the trail, uh, larger than three inches that need to be dropped, and they will be dropped parallel to the trail so as to keep it open until construction starts. Um, and then there's another area right at the slip, um, and it's a 70 foot, 75 foot long area on either side of the slip and down perhaps 20 feet or so that will allow for the construction of a shot feet wall uh, to stabilize the slip area, and then directly in the slip area, all trees will be felled so that a, um, 
basically it's a geometric grid system that gets uh, put in place and seeded with um, plants that will be able to stabilize that slope. Thank you. And that is uh, the, the only other thing is uh, coming up on March 1st, we'll have um, probably some other um, projects for you to, to review and also we'll be presenting um, banking services. Uh, if we did send out an RFP on that and so we'll be presenting that to those board of works and to council on March 1st. Is there any updates on the water? tower and the pumping and so on and so forth? They're still having issues with the pumps at the pumping station. We haven't uh, switched those. Um, well, Matt, if you're still on the line, would you like to do the update on this, please? Sure, absolutely. Uh, so we're, we're still in the process of commissioning the Armory Road Booster Station uh, specifically the pumps that serve IPC. Um, they were supposed to be there today, uh, unfortunately with the weather that got pushed. So hopefully they'll be there tomorrow and we're hoping to get that up and running in the very near future. Um, all the other infrastructure is in place. Uh, phase one is complete. Uh, well seven is working well. Um, we've got good quality water that's coming out of um, wells one, three, and five that are be, being treated at Carrollton Road. And uh, the, our next uh, step is going to be to uh, rehabilitate um, your uh, water storage assets. And uh, we're meeting on that tomorrow to finalize those details, but that'll likely happen um, probably late summer, fall, but we're hoping to get it in, get those in in 2021. What's the, what is the uh, schedule on those which tanks will be taken off first? We're still not 100% sure, but uh, on, on what the, the contractors will want to do. And in my opinion, uh, the Armour Road tank, uh, the existing Armour Road tank would be the first one that would go out of service. We would only do one at a time um, to, to ensure that uh, you have uh, plenty of capacity and fire protection. And the plan right now is to do um, the one out of the Anderson plant or Deer Creek, uh, the hilltop one, which is on the Baker land, and the Armory Road one. IPC will be done at a later time. Thank you. Cameron, did you have any comments or requests? Uh, just uh, another great job by the street department. I've seen the water department guys out there as well helping out this morning. So the roads are, I think we got over 10 inches of snow. So I'm, for what we got and for what the roads look like now, I think it did a fantastic job. So kudos to those guys. That's all I got. I second that. I third that. <laughs> it really was amazing to, to see uh, the job that they were able to do. I think they did have to tow a few vehicles that were in the snow routes. Um, but um, the downtown looked fabulous, so uh, they really did an excellent job. I think they were in at midnight last night and um, they're still, still at it at noon today, so they, they've had a very long day and uh, we'll be back in the morning early to do the cleanup uh, for areas where people are shoveling their sidewalks and getting the snow back out into the roadways and so forth, so um, really a fantastic job. Leanne, did you have any comments? I don't think so. Public comments? Anita, I wanted to ask about the CDBG grant. Is there any kind of a, a match from the city for that? Yes, there is 
is a um, a local match on that. And what is the amount on that? Um, I will have to pull the budget. Meanwhile, we have a question from the comment um, wanting to know the amount of the check for milestone. Leanne, do you have that amount? Sure. I thought I said once, but maybe I didn't. Eighty-three thousand. I, did, I didn't. It, we probably didn't get it written down. Okay, eighty-three thousand three hundred and sixty-two dollars and nine cents. Could you repeat, please? Sure. Eight three three six two three six two three six two Thank you. Emily, what fund will that be paid from? Did you ask a different question, Gail? I did. Um, she gave the amount for that partial payment back on the retainage for milestone. I just asked what fund that was coming from. Um, to be honest with you, there is an appropriation written down on Aaron's claim, so I will get with him, and then I'll let you know. Okay. Emily, were you able to find the I'm, I'm working on it right now. I'm actually okay. on another Board of Works meeting right now. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing okay. If you, if you can't find it, if you just bear with me for a minute. Uh, and Emily, if you can't find it, if you could just forward the information and we'll get the... So the local match, which was required 20%, is $149,059. And where is that coming from? What fund is that coming from? That, I will have to pull the resolution and look to where that was coming from. Okay. I don't have, again, I wasn't, I don't have that information right in front of me. If you would share that with me when you find it, I'd appreciate that. This is Bill Connor. Yes. Yeah. Yep. I will share it. Um, and, yeah. Yeah. Okay. If you could send it to me, Emily. I'll yeah, I'll send it to Anita. Um, let me make a note here. And uh, Mike is researching to find the resolution. Well, I'm sure we indicated in there. Um, yeah, this would have been a change. A couple of electronic fund transfers from general to water and wastewater that were on the claims tonight. What, Gail? I had two questions about electronic funds transfers that were on the claims tonight from general to water and general to wastewater. So what page was it on, Gail? Um, it says page three on the claims sheet. Hold on. Let me get to it. It's impossible to remember everything. And you said page three? Yeah, it says page three at the top of that claims page. Um, and it's from general to water? It says 3460, um, an EFF, EFT transfer from general to water. I don't see where you're seeing it at all. I'm not seeing it on my page. Oh, on the transfers? Yeah. $34.60? Yes. Yeah, that's when, like, the Bureau of Motor Vehicles pays their bill, and they pay it all into general. We have to turn around and send it to water and waste because that's where it belongs to. Okay. And so both those transfers refer to that. I think it said, maybe it said something about BMV on there, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then uh, you were going to let me know on the milestone where that's coming from? Yeah, I, I will check and make sure. I would assume we're taking it um, from the highway, um, but I, do, I don't know. I'll have to, I'll, I'll see Aaron first thing in the morning, and then I'll get an email sent to you. And then I have one last question. Can you explain, um, there was a claim for RME insurance that had something to do with the Delphi redevelopment bond, sure. and it, it would be reimbursed to the city. What does that mean? I mean, that means like that the Delphi redevelopment is required um, to have a bond. Yeah. But it, we purchased it through the city of Delphi through RME insurance. Okay. Their invoice has already been created for uh, the redevelopment. They have to pay the city of Delphi.
Delphi back out of their funds. But it has to be titled under the city of Delphi because it's underneath our roof. So is that separate from what each one of us on the RDC gets bonded for? I'm sorry. That is I, our bonding? I, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so that's the bonding for the, okay. for the board members. $75 a piece, and this is less than that, so I wasn't sure if it was something different. You know, that's what they ended up charging you. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, scale, it is the Water Utility Construction Fund. Water Utility Sure. Thanks, Emily. Not a problem.